Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss. And Joker is a film designed to be up for interpretation by its audience. And not the interpretation some critics would have you believe. That people don't kill people, the Joker movie kills people. Spoiler warning if you have not seen Joker yet. Okay, the interpretation debate focuses on the film's ending, which poses that much of the film's narrative could have been a false account of an incarcerated, mentally disturbed man. Director Todd Phillips confirmed to the LA Times that he was inspired by the Joker graphic novel The Killing Joke, which depicted the Joker's origin as a failed comedian and included the mysterious line, If I'm going to have a past, I prefer it to be multiple choice. And Phillips leaned into that concept with his film, saying that the movie is, quote, less you being kind of presented with the facts than you being presented with these possibilities. But within this broader mystery over what exactly is and is not real in this narrative, there's a narrower mystery within that narrative. The question of Arthur Fleck's parentage. The film poses a subplot that first suggests that Arthur is the illegitimate son of Thomas Wayne, father of Bruce Wayne, which would make Joker Batman's brother. But then that claim appears to be dismissed shortly after, with Arthur learning from medical records that he was adopted and that his mother was mentally ill as well. But then there's a very subtle moment right before the film's final act that if you caught it actually changes the entire paternity narrative and suggests that within Arthur Fleck's maybe fictional narrative, Thomas Wayne, a lion liar who lies, orchestrated an insane cover up to hide Batman's brother from the world. Let us investigate this deception in this episode of Total Conspiracy. And before I dive into this conspiracy, if you plan to attend LA Comic-Con, the host of New Rockstars will be hosting a panel there Saturday, October 12th at 3 p.m. Come meet us there and ask us all your deeper questions and see how deep this conspiracy rabbit hole can go. Okay, early in the Joker film, Arthur's mother, Penny Fleck, a former employee of Thomas Wayne, mentions having written letters to Thomas that he will not answer. Later, Arthur reads one of those letters and sees that she wrote to Thomas saying Arthur was his son and that she and Thomas had an affair and that Arthur was a product of that. But when Arthur visits the Wayne estate and gives young Batman a taste for clown fingers, younger Alfred Pennyworth comes out of the gate and denies that there was ever any affair. But if you'll notice, when Alfred approaches Arthur, he says in so many words, oh, you're her son. It suggests that he's at least vaguely familiar with Penny Fleck and likely that he has read some of those letters and then maybe even he could be involved somehow. Arthur then confronts Thomas Wayne in the bathroom at a charity event where Thomas also denies that they're related. Then Arthur says, look at us, I think we are. An interesting response because obviously Joaquin Phoenix and Brett Cullen look nothing alike. But you know, with movies, we always suspend our disbelief that actors who look nothing alike are just cast as parent and child. But for Arthur to call it out like this seems odd. For him to say it kind of suggests that we're either meant to doubt him and the authenticity of this entire narrative, that Arthur Fleck just sees the world through his different eyes that are at odds with our objective reality, or that from Arthur's perspective, the perspective that we're seeing this entire story from, these two men actually do look alike and we're just supposed to go along with that. Thomas tells Arthur that he never had an affair with Penny, that she claimed Arthur was his son, but that she actually adopted Arthur. Thomas said that she was mentally ill and spent some time at Arkham State Hospital. And Thomas's claim seems to be confirmed when Arthur checks Penny's medical history at Arkham State Hospital and finds in that file paperwork confirming that she did adopt Arthur and that she even allowed a past boyfriend to abuse Arthur as a kid. But all of this paperwork was signed off by a man named Dr. Benjamin Stoner, which actually should raise some red flags. And not just because the uh, name itself, <laughs> Benjamin. I'm going to explain why this name is so important, but before I continue, huge thanks to Cove Audio for sponsoring this episode. So I've been using Cove's commuter Bluetooth speaker and I freaking love it. Just listen to how loud it can get. <laughs> bit loud, I know. Yeah, so all you do is you just connect your Bluetooth and you let it blast while I'm cooking or tabletop gaming with friends or assembling new furniture after I lose the tabletop game and smash my furniture with friends and then angrily trying to assemble new furniture because I don't speak Swedish. <laughs> really, anytime I want a break from headphones and I want a super loud speaker to cover my frustrated roars. I can usually run it on a single charge, which gets you up to eight hours. It's water resistant and it has indoor and outdoor equalizer modes. So you'll have the best sound no matter where you you are in your kitchen or like blowing off steam outside. It has this touch slider and tactile volume function to give you complete control over your swipe. And in addition to this quality, Cove is one of the most affordable speakers out there because we are giving you guys a special discount of 65% off. Just click on our link below coveaudio.com rock 65. 
Okay, Dr. Benjamin Stoner is an actual character from the DC Comics, the former head psychiatrist at Arkham Asylum, who later becomes the villain Anti-Fate, battling the DC hero Dr. Fate. So Benjamin Stoner is a lesser known DC villain, but he is not a good guy. Now, while I don't think this Joker film is setting up a Dr. Fate spinoff, I do think the negative connotation around Benjamin Stoner, combined with Thomas Wayne's political aspirations and elitism, and the way he looks down on the working class, are more than enough to call into question the authenticity of these medical reports. Thomas Wayne's historical past is that of a career physician. With this man's immense wealth, his resources, his connections with powerful figures and medical professionals, how hard would it really be for him to falsify medical reports to cover up a scandal, especially with the help of a body man who used to work for British intelligence. And then, if this isn't enough, right as the movie transitions into its third act, after Arthur kills his mother, he sits in their apartment and finds an old photograph of her. On the back is a written message, love your smile, T. W. Holy shit, Arthur's father is Tiger Woods! Now, seriously, though, if Thomas Wayne truly had no relationship with Penny Fleck, this probably wouldn't exist, right? And if this movie wanted us to think that the medical history it previously presented about Penny was the real truth, it definitely would not show us this disputing evidence. So this is designed to call into question everything we have just been told about Thomas Wayne. And the fact that this love note was, quote, love your smile, is even more on the nose. Arthur's whole identity is based around his smile and his laugh. This moment is meant to suggest to us that that smile was inherited from one man in particular. But whatever answer Thomas Wayne gets from Maury Povich, this film's whole narrative is unreliable. Arthur Fleck's final scene in the mental ward matches the setting from the flashback earlier in the film when he pounded his head against the wall. His hair in that final scene doesn't appear to have green dye in it, when we definitely saw him dye his hair green earlier. His relationship with Sophie was all imaginary. His early appearance in the studio audience of Live with Murray Franklin was a flight of fancy. Some have even pointed out that all the the clocks in the movie are at the time 11:11, the time one traditionally makes a wish, suggesting this is all his dream backstory, or that this movie is now connected to Jordan Peele's Us. Now that's gonna be a total conspiracy. So why does this question of Thomas Wayne's paternity even matter if this is all fictional anyway? Well, the fact that Arthur could conceive this drama as part of his fantasy gives us insight into this Joker's mind. People who believe in conspiracy type thinking don't find their truth in the simplest explanation of events. Their truth is always more complicated, dramatic, filled with deception and cover-ups. They cannot embrace a boring reality. So naturally, when Arthur Fleck is posed to tell one of the narratives of his multiple choice backstory, it makes sense that his dream scenario would be that his insanity could have been inherited by the same man who bore his arch enemy. Arthur finds the most delightful fiction to be one in which he is the neglected, abused, bastard son of the corrupt king. One whom the king tried to hide in shame, but failed as a bastard son became the court jester who got vengeance against his estranged father, turned the kingdom upside down, and crowned himself the clown prince of crime. A fantasy that really only makes sense to a madman because it's a total conspiracy. Comment down below with your thoughts on this. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EABoss and subscribe to New Rockstars for more total conspiracy investigations. Thank you for watching. And uh, you know, there probably are a few kids out there wondering if Tiger Woods is their dad. <laughs>